Good afternoon, YouTube. This is Angie with Angie's Art Addicts YouTube channel. I am coming to you once again after a long break um, to bring you a review and comparison of these two full 120 sets of uh, colored pencils. Um, both of them have had amazing reviews online and I do agree that they're both uh, very good pencils. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start out with the Arteza 120 Expert colored pencils. These are a wax blend um, colored pencil soft core 4 millimeter lead as you can see. Um, I really appreciated the small and compact tin that they came in. Um, most of us in the coloring community uh, know that the full sets come in, even the smaller sets such as like the Faber-Castell and so forth come in the longer um, thin sheets or trays um, in the tins and they're really hard to store and inconvenient to bring out on your desk and so forth and um, those of us who don't put them into folders or um, binders or whatever um, so I really did appreciate that it is very compact um, in comparison let me see if I can grab a book that a lot of people have Probably, possibly. So here is like the Johanna Basford Enchanted Forest. So as you can see, um, it's it's pretty small. So um, it's way smaller than her book. <laughs> and all of her books, for the most part, are the same size. So anyways, um, as you open the package, um, they do have a very thin, not too so useful, um, piece of foam, I guess you would call it, um, inside of the tin is the Arteza 120 colors. Uh, along with that are the Light Fastness. They are um, on each pencil, I do believe, yes. And they are indicated by a one plus for excellent light fastness, two plus for great light fastness, three for good, and four for fair. Um, they do not come in order as to how they are described here. And these, for the most part, um, as far as I've seen, which I haven't done a swatch test on everything, but they are in pretty color coordinated order. Um, so you do have to go in and redo the entire set <laughs> or put them in order if you want them to be in this you know, specific order. They are a soft uh, blended pencil, soft core pencil. I wouldn't say that they're as soft as Prismacolor by any means, but I would definitely say that they are a more reasonable uh, budget alternative to that. Um, I did have some issues with um, purchasing these. By the way, these are not, um, I'm not endorsing these for the company being paid by any means. Um, I purchased these um, not even uh, full price. I, I mean, I guess I am paying full price, but I used the Afterpay app, which was a big plus. Um, so, with the uh, Groundhog's Day sale, which was like 20%, I believe the total was like $66. Um, and so I was able to pay $15 or $15.95 um, four times every two weeks. And that for myself, uh, with my current income situation, was a lot easier for me to do um, than to just fork out, you know, almost 70 bucks at the moment. And that was a big benefit. So I will say that that is a, a great deal. You do not have to have good credit. They don't check your credit as long as you have a debit card or bank account. Um, they work with you. So And there's no interest fees. Um, the only thing that can occur um, to add on to your cost is if you have, if they go to take out the payment and it's not there in your bank account, then they can accrue an $8 late fee and you're not able to purchase anything else as long as you don't have your payments up to date. But... Uh, you can charge anything from $35 to either $1,000 or $2,000. And they have tons of stores um, that they use for that app. But anyways, so um, I got the pencil set. And the first thing I noticed was that they didn't have any form of lifts on here. Um, these I added on myself. They're not perfect by any means. But it's really kind of a hassle to try and like pinch these and they you know the pencils flop everywhere um all i did was i added let's see if i can do this i doubt i can okay 
So I added uh, hole punches on each side of the thin plastic and then just took some elastic. I tried rubber bands, tried tying it, different things, but when you tie it underneath, it kind of built up layers, or not layers, but added height to each tray, which causes the lid not to close properly. So I figured out this one, see that one just came undone. I didn't have it glued good enough. It was one of the first ones I did. But I figured out that it was easier to take and do the hole punches, put them through there, and then take super glue or hot glue. I'd use super glue, which might have been the problem, and just kind of do it underneath there. So I need to redo that one. So anyways, that, that would be my one complaint. Um, my next complaint would be that as I began going through my pencils, I noticed that I had one that did not have, I'm going to go ahead and lay all these out here for you. I had noticed one did not have any markings at all on them, um, or on it. And I thought at first that it was the, um, stone gray. Um, and I guess I thought that because I thought it was, um, I thought that the pencil that said white quartz was white, um, in my ADD-ness. <laughs> I see white and I didn't even bother reading the second word. So anyways, um, so here is the pencil that had no markings on it. Nope, that's not it. Hold on. Here it is. So it, as you can see, it has no markings on it. It is in fact one of their pencils. Um, and so I called the company and as I'm sure a lot of people who might be watching this have already, you know, read or found out that Arteza is a really great company and very much so stand by their products. Um, I contacted them and told them that, um, there was a pencil that, um, had no markings on it and I wasn't really sure what it was and asked them if they could help me figure that out and send me the correct one. They said, don't worry about it. We will be sending you a brand new set and uh, please feel free to keep um, the full set that you've already purchased, um, which was amazing. Um, so within two days, I had a new set. And um, when I got the new set, <laughs> um, there was also an issue with that set. And this is the new set. Um, I sat down just like with the other set. I didn't do anything with the trays or anything. Just like with the other set, I sit down and I tried to put everything in order and make sure that all the pencils were right. And let's see here. It's been a few days since I got them and I'm trying to remember exactly what, let's see here. Oh, yes, I remember what it is. Here we go. I have two white quartz. So there's a white quartz right there. And here is, let me put these back up here, or back on here. And here is a white quartz right here. So I contacted the company again and um, spoke to customer service and he went and grabbed a set of colored pencils um, identical to mine and we went through and tried to figure out what it was that was missing and honestly at the moment I can't even remember exactly what pencil it was we figured out was missing but um, long story short I told them please don't send me another set you can just send me the replacement pencils um, and that would be great so they are a great company to work with I did tell him that maybe you know they might want to work on their um, trays to include the lift that that is a deal breaker for a lot of colorists or artists as well as um their you know process of checking the sets before they send them out um quality control there you go that was what i was looking for so anyways um the pencils are very very similar it to um in my opinion to the um Faber Castell Polychromos. And the reason I say that is just the way that they look. Um, they just remind me of that quite a bit. Here is um, one very used one. <laughs> but as you can see, they do have the same shape. The Polychromos is a little bit bigger. Um, but they just reminded me of that. And the core, it's a lot harder than 
the Prismacolor. And I'm using Prismacolor as an example because it is a wax-based uh, pencil and a soft core pencil. Um, you know, and I, I at first when I seen the prices of the 72 set, I thought, wow, that's a great deal. And not that I don't think that they are still a great deal in the 120 set, but if the price is like $89, that's without any, you know, discounts or anything or, you know, sales for 120 pencils. And you can get on average a set of Prismacolor Premier 150 set in America for between $90 and $100. They're really not a budget set anymore. They're really top of the line set and should be compared that way um, because that's just the facts. <laughs> um, so anyways, um, I did do a few swatches um, of this and we'll do so on screen as well. I did this in my new system I have for my um, swatches to keep them protected and so forth. Um, which is just a happy notebook, or happy uh, planner, and I had printed out some two by two squares with um, oblong or rectangle um, things and lines that's for like mixes. And then this is the swatches that I have done so far with the Arteza and a few here as well. And I plan to do some over here in the Castle Arts. I haven't got those done yet. And I'm going to put these up here as close as I can. And please excuse the writing. It looks like crap. <laughs> um, as you can see, they really are very pretty colors. Um, they come on very good. And I plan to do some on screen as well. Um, those are blended out. Some are blended with a blender pencil. Some are blended with um, uh, Gamisol. Very lightly, but some are blended with Gamisol and some are blended with um, the blender pencil. And I really like this set, or this set, I'm sorry, this way of keeping my um, swatches. I've struggled a lot with figuring out a system that I really liked. I begin this journey of coloring this, this time um, using like a notebook like this and I had to put a page in between each one because they were coming off on each other some of the pencils and prior to getting these two sets all I had was Crayola and like two 24 sets or 24 and 12 sets of uh, Prismacolor. Uh, I talked about this previously but due to a family emergency I had to sell off all of my coloring uh, stuff to help my daughter who's in college. So I'm rebuilding everything at this point. So um, this is just like here I have a, like Crayola, Crayola PC for Prismacolor. Um, I do have a few uh, Faber-Castell Polychromos and Faber-Castell, um, oh, what are they called? Gold Faber. And um, I like this way of doing this. Um, as you can see, they kind of come off on that side, and I realized I needed to put things in between it. But I wanted something where I didn't have to use a, a uh, stencil, which was a hassle. And I really am planning on, in the future, taking this method right here, and before I have them printed out actually taking and printing the names on there so that my ugly handwriting isn't on there. I'm probably a little OCD with that. So anyways, without further ado, I'm going to do a little bit of swatching for you of these pencils. And I'm also going to do a quick comparison. I think maybe it would be best and more beneficial to go ahead and do the short review hopefully of the castle arts and then do the swatching of both in comparison so the 120 set of castle arts i purchased from a individual off of ebay it was brand new and i didn't realize at the time that castle arts had changed their pencils in the recent past to include names on their pencils um, as well as change the uh, image on the front to castles um i was a little disappointed um because 
Now I'm going to have to go through and figure out, you know, the names and so forth. But I don't think the pencil's changed at all. Um, I think, let me check on the back of this. I believe there's a, yeah, there's the colors on here. And the tin was extremely damaged. And I, <laughs> unfortunately, I, I wish I would have thought a little bit more about it. But I probably saved a dollar or two, maybe, doing it through eBay. But it is what it is. I have them. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me. So... I'm going to definitely have to do a good color swatch, and so inside is a piece of foam, a little bit thicker than the other one, and, you know, their website and so forth card, and this is the average size of the uh, tins that we get, and this one does have lifts on it already, which is great, um, and it comes in three trays. It also was not organized by color, and I had to do so myself. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take this and set this away. And lay these out here. So, let's see if we can do this here like this. Some of them are a little bit shorter. I've colored with a few of them and sharpened them. So, hopefully you're able to see all of that. And... These are considered also a soft core pencil. Um, they, from what I gather and from what I've experienced myself in using them a little bit, I do believe they're a wax and oil blend. They do not perform anything like Prismacolor or like the um, Arteza. They are much more similar to the Polychromos. They are very much so a hard pencil, but also a soft pencil. I really don't know how to explain it. I'm not that wise in, <laughs> in colored pencils quite yet, but it's not like coloring with a Crayola colored pencil. I will say that it, when I say it's hard, it's not quite that hard, but it's also soft enough to be able to be blendable. And in my opinion, these pencils are double, you know, better than the Arteza. And the reason I say that is they they just lay out so much easier and better to blend i guess and layer but i guess that just depends on what way you like to color i'm personally still learning a lot and learning how layering works and working on the light-handed you know approach to things so let's take a look real quick at just a random pencil um i'm not sure of the amount or the uh, size of the core I should have found that out before I started this, but I do believe these are about the same size as your Prismacolor. No, they're a little bit, they're a little bit bigger, but they have the rounded end, the dipped tip, which indicates the color, and they're pretty true to true to life um, colors. The Castle Art Supplies and the number right there, like oh three two. My lighting's so screwed up. I apologize. It's been a while since I've done this. Um, and I'm not sure about the exact look of the new ones, if they've changed it up quite a bit. But I do know that they do include the names. Um, if you purchase them and they have the castle on the front, they do include the names and numbers. So if that's important to you, make sure that you get that set. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what I did last night before um, going to bed and kind of planning out this, I took and got pencils together from the few different kinds that I have. Oh, excuse me. Everybody heard that drop. You know, that's not a good sign with colored pencils. Um, luckily, they were my gold favor. So, I have went out and purchased a few different... Let me see if this lighting helps. Bad, that, that's better. Okay. So, this is... That's not a cream, though. That is actually like a skin tone. Um, let's see here. Anyways. So, this is... And they're the same numbers as in the Polychromo. So, that's a 130, 131, and 132 in that. And let's see here. Okay. Um, I have in the Polychromos, I have, oh, that's not right. Excuse me. Let's see here. All right. I have cream, which is 102. And then 131, which is also over there. 189 and 132 and I'm doing this because they are similar colors as to the other sets and they're the only ones I have of those sets so 
I wanted to kind of be able to compare on paper the Prismacolor, the Gold Faber, the Pris um, I'm sorry, Polychromos, the Castle Art, and the Arteza. So here is the colors that I was going to be using for the Prismacolor. Um, peach, cream, and pink, and white. It's the only ones that I have that would even compare to those colors. I know there's a lot better colors I could be using from Prismacolor, but I don't have them. So, and I also, just for the hell of it, um, threw in my Crayolas, and they are cantaloupe, apricot, salmon, and peach. Um, for a while, that's all I had, and um, I have also noticed in comparing them that the Castle Arts definitely, and the Polychromos, definitely blend better when using, now this is just a little <laughs> end of it, they're easy to break. Uh, this is the Karen Dash uh, Bright, Full Bright Blender. Um, and it works like magic on these. Now they do also work with, <laughs> excuse me, like the Prismacolor Colorless Blender or the Derwent Blender or the Lyra Rembrandt Blender. Now I think the Lyra Rembrandt bl Blender, ooh, that's a hard one to say. Lyra Rembrandt Blender um, would probably work best with the oil-based or mixed pencils, uh, being that Lyra um, is a oil-based pencil, I do believe. So, all right, let's get started. We're pretty far into this already. Hopefully, you guys aren't getting too bored. If so, I apologize. Um, let's pick out the pencils that are similar to this. So, um, let's see here. I'm just going to guess to begin with, and we can edit or take away from that after that point. So, I'm just going to grab these kind of skin tones and creams real quick. And set those to the side here. And let's grab a couple of bright colors just to show a difference, I guess, between the Arteza and these. Um, let's do like a, maybe like a turquoise. And how about this? How about like this right here, this right here, and then maybe a green. Uh. And then, <laughs> I don't know. Let's do blue, I guess. Okay, let's do blue. Somebody's probably going to say that was really bad choice of colors, but I don't claim to be anything but a novelist. Yeah, I don't think that's going to work, but we'll see. Maybe not. Sorry about the cat crying. Okay, now we're going to go and get into the Arteza set here. Down right here. And the Arteza, let's get a cream and a white. Okay, that is like jasmine yellow. And what is that one? Sapphire yellow. We'll see about that. They don't really have a cream in this set um, that I remember seeing. Um... And let's do marmalade orange, apricot, peaches and cream, and maybe coral. As far as skin tones go, maybe. Um, let's see if we can pick better colors as far as the comparison of bright colors go. How about blue, pink, and purple? That can sometimes work really good. Let's do a peacock blue and I might grab that of the other of the castle art as well <laughs> excuse me all right let's do the fruit punch and orchid okay so that's what we're gonna do and I'll grab those of castle arts as well whenever I get ready to do that so let's have a seat and get this done now I'm going to be using the very inexpensive Nina paper from Walmart. Um, I get a pack of oh, scribbles on it of uh, like 300 or something for like 397. It's ridiculous how cheap it is, but I've compared a lot of different papers and this is definitely what I prefer for colored pencils. So um, let's see how we're going to do this. Let's see here. I generally use a stencil, but I reorganized my desk last night and not sure exactly where my stencils are and don't want to have to take up too much time. So that's not a perfect circle. Let's see here what we got. 
Okay, let's use the top of this. All right, so top of a spray bottle. <laughs> and I'm going to be making a few circles here. And I'll probably regret making it this big. There's one. There's two. Three. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six sets. So let's do six here. Okay. I know they're not perfect by no means. I'm just winging it here, guys. All right. And then at the other end, we're going to do... Um, three of the Arteza and three of the um, Castle Arts, sorry. And let's do those like oblong like this kind of. Um, I'm sure they're going to be off, but um, we'll figure it out from there. All right, um, let's see here. And then just connect them. And then one over here. And okay, so we're going to use this as the Archiza and this one for Castle Arts. And go ahead and write what we're doing up here. Let's begin with the Castle Arts. And then go to the Arteza. And this is the skin tone, light peaches and creams and so forth. Let's do next the, I'm going to put Faber-Castell Poly right here. And then I'm going to put FC for Faber-Castell. And then uh, Gold Faber. And these are not the watercolor Gold Fabers either. Uh, the next would be PC for Prismacolor. Um, Premier, so that nobody wonders if I'm using Scholar or not. And then last but not least is the Crayola. These are not the Crayola Soft Blend or Blenders or anything like that. It's just a plain old Crayola 100 set, I believe. And there we have our base. Okay, so let's start, like I said, with the Castle Arts. And I guess I will do a little scrap over here to figure out what exactly I'm going to do. We're going to start with like a light. Um, cream I guess so let's figure out which one of these would work best for the castle art and see if this color might help let me stand up real quick and see how this is looking let me zoom in also sorry if that gave you a headache I apologize let's see if that is any better okay um light and then kind of darker that looks pretty good let's see what this one is and that was number 073. That's a little bit too yellow, I think. Um, and that was, oh, that's almost gone. I don't even know what that is. If you can see that, I think it says 985. I'm not sure. Um, okay, so then, this kind of seems yellow too. What is this? Yeah, that's pretty yellow as well. Okay, I'm setting that to the side, and that one was 002. And then the next one would be, I guess, this light color here. That looks pretty good. And maybe, hmm, I think we're going to go from a uh, pink, like a peach color here to, maybe this should be first there. And then that, and then maybe this, and that, no. Okay, I think I got it figured out. Okay, so we're going to go peach to light peach to like pinkish. And then light pink and then cream mm, let's throw out the light peach I think that that's probably right 
Okay, so we're going to use on the Castle Arts 020, 018, 019, and 073. Um, Alright, and they do come pre sharpened, both sets. Both are kind of, I would say, flat. <laughs> Uh, both of them, they both do sharpen beautifully though, um, as most have figured out that some of the cheaper sets have splintering and just cheap wood they use. I am using the uh, Prismacolor uh, 2 barrel um, sharpener right there. And so let's get started here. Now, um, I'm sure that everyone out there watching this can attest that I am not a great blender, but um see how we can make this work so i'm going to start out um just i'm sorry if this twisting is not working for you but I'm trying to make it where you can see as i'm coloring i'm going to start out with just the light circles i'll try to keep that kind of do them evenly as far as the color placement goes and i can always go back and do it darker to show where what should be darker to lighter and I always start doing coloring with lines instead of you know going back and forth with lines instead of tiny circles and uh, it's a real struggle um, then I'm going to go in and do lighter so that I can start blending in the pink and if anybody has any tips or suggestions, <laughs> I definitely would love to see them or hear them. Feel free to message me, leave comments, because um, I struggle a lot with the coloring and um, am really, really eager to learn how to do as uh, great as I see everyone doing online and in the coloring groups. Everybody is so amazing, and I'm just absolutely in awe of everything. Do you hear that running back and forth? My cats are going crazy. I have a male and a female cat. Kitty boy and kitty girl. <laughs> and they are nuts. So anyway, I'm going to go in with the, that was, like I said, uh, 020. And I'm going to go in with 018. Um, right where I started lightning, L light, yeah, lighting, lightning, um, the peach color. Go in and start lightly working in this pink. Now this is going to take forever. I don't know if I should stop the video and bring it back in or what I should do. I don't think I've ever really brought two videos together. So I don't even know how to edit it. And I'll tell you, um, it's kind of funny, but all the videos on my page that I have, um, when I make them, I don't even watch them. Um, I literally make them and post them immediately. This does not look as good as it should at all. Um, let's see here. I went the other day before deciding that I was going to try to start making videos again. And I watched a few of my videos and I was, I don't know. I was not very pleased with what I seen. Um, I guess just because of how manic sometimes I sound on, on tape and how different of a channel mine is compared to everybody else's. Um, how inexperienced I am at making videos, at coloring, and just really everything. I, I don't know. I was kind of hesitant again to start and... Uh, honestly, I'm not even sure if I will make any more after this or even post this, so we will see. Um, if you watched the very first video I made introducing my channel, I said that the point of my channel was to make a place for people who were beginning colorists, who struggled with possible mental illness, um, self-doubt, just emotional issues, period. And 
I know for myself, I have zero confidence in anything that I do involving artistic type stuff, um, especially coloring. And even though I'm drawn to it like white on rice, and that's not a prejudice statement, just a common term that I use. Um, but even though I'm drawn to it heavily, I hate it at the same time because every time just for instance like what I'm doing right now I look at it I'm just like that looks like absolute crap and often I stop and just like you know throw it away or you know give up before it can even come together and I do feel like a lot of people feel that way um and we tend to forget that people not very many people should I say I'm just kind of going back and forth by the way trying to make it look like I think it should. Um, not very many people pick this, you know, craft up or this, you know, hobby up and are just magic with it to begin with. It's not something that you learn overnight. It is a, it is a process and it's just something that takes a while. And I don't like that. I want everything right now, you know, when I want it and how I want it. <laughs> Oh, I know what I forgot to do. I forgot to... Let me see if I can erase that. This is a really bad example of how good these um, blend. Because they really do blend a lot better than what I'm showing you right now. I just really suck at this, I guess. Um, let's do a little bit of a lighter blend here. Yeah, I definitely am not doing like it should be. Um, I'm going to take the blender pencil thing that I have. Yeah, that looks like absolute crud. Um, and try and make it look a little bit better with the Caran d'Ache um, Bright Blender, Full Bright Blender, whatever it's called. That looks horrible. Oh my gosh. Um and see if I can make any difference with that. If not, I'll probably just delete this video <laughs> and try again later. I'm just kind of going over everything with that lightest pencil and seeing if that will make anything a little bit better. All right, um, let's grab this blender pencil here and see what we got. I put off first and I'm gonna start with the darkest color, I guess. And probably should be going in circles, but I'm not going to. And I guess it's making it a little bit better. Yeah, that's just a really bad example. I hate that because these are really good pencils. Um, yeah, so... That sucks really bad. Um, yeah, there's just no helping that at all. Just no helping it at all. I don't know. So, bad example, but let's see if I can do any better on the Arteza one. Um, here is the cream. And let's just sample that over here. Maybe I should not do these big circles because they are kind of challenging for me and maybe just do little areas. Maybe that would be a little easier for me and not so, um, I don't know, easy to mess up. Uh, let's see here. I'm just seeing what these colors are here. Okay, let's do this, this, and what is this? This is a coral. Okay, I'm going to use coral, apricot, peaches and cream, and cream. Did I say that there wasn't a cream in the Arteza? Wow. Yeah, there is a cream. <laughs> um, okay, so let's start with the coral. And I'm just going to kind of randomly do a shape and try to keep the shadows right to where you're able to see me color at the same time. Um, I 
And if I am, you know, having this issue because of something that I'm not doing correctly, please, by all means, tell me so that I can, you know, not struggle with this as much as I have now from what I've gathered um, to blend like this. You just kind of go from darker to lighter and um, you can go back and make it darker later. Um, and you start the next color in the area that you started lightening the last and work on it kind of like that. And then just get lighter and lighter and then mix the next one. There I go with those straight lines again. Okay, and then, see this is a lot easier for me to do than a big area. The next color would be peaches and cream. And I know that these colors are very similar, so it's not really easy to tell, but when I had a lot of coloring books, I attempted to do a lot of skin tones and a lot of people find that really struggling uh, or struggle with that a lot, I'm sorry, as I, well as I did. Um, so having these tones was something important to me. All right, that, see, that doesn't look near as bad. <laughs> uh, we'll go back and do the uh, other one as well. So I'm going to darken up that coral and the Arteza a little bit. I probably should have something underneath here because my desk is kind of bumpy. And lighten that up there. I'll darken it up, but put a lighter layer. I'm just going over once again all of the different colors kind of in a different direction. And the next one, peaches and cream, and then cream, and then I'm going to do a blender. Okay, so, excuse me, I'm going to stand up to see if, how this is looking on the camera. I'm going to zoom it up here for you guys. As you can see, it does, you know, look pretty good without a blender, especially with the person doing it. Not very good at doing it. Um, I'm going to use the Prismacolor blender for this. Um, it is my favorite blender pencil for wax-based pencils. Um, it's already clean, so I'm going to start at the darkest end. No, the lightest. I'm sorry, the lightest. And just kind of work in circles, blending, and see what result we get here. <sighs> yeah, that looks really good. Thank goodness for blender pencils. Make people who don't know how to color or <laughs> blend very good not look as awful as they could be. All right, I think I'm going to go in a line like this because I don't really like the way those circles are looking. All right. You guys are probably screaming, what is she doing? She's messing it up. And this is the difference between unblended and blended. All right, let's go back to the castle arch real quick and see if I can't do a better thing with this. <laughs> Excuse me. All right, so we're going to start out with the pink, I believe. Is that what I started out with with that one? Yeah, the coral. Okay, so we're going to start out with that. I don't think I have a better... Let me see if this is more of a coral color. Yeah, I think it is compared to that. Let's check that out real quick. Uh, no, we'll stick to that. Okay, so let's start out with this. This is, once again, 018 of the Castle Arts. I'm going to put a A right here for Arteza and C right here for Castle Arts. Okay, so turn the paper again this way and see if I can't make any better of a blend this way. 
like I said, they're both really great pencils. And um, I had a huge addiction to buying the full sets of everything I could find when I got into coloring. Um, and I would sit there and not only would I hate everything that I colored, so it kept me from coloring a lot, but I would spend money that I didn't need to be spending. And so when I decided that I was going to try to get back into coloring again in my YouTube video, um, I swore to myself that I was not going to start that same, um, What's the word I'm looking for? Just toxicity of trying to keep up with the Joneses, have the best of the best, because I've had it all. And even when I had it, I didn't even use it. So it's kind of crazy to think that I would do that again. I'm very grateful that the um, resale price of this stuff, as long as it's not really used, is pretty, pretty high and easy to resell because um, my daughter in college had gotten into, like I said, a financial situation where um, she really needed some help. And because I hadn't hardly used my pencils, I was able to do so. So, you know, no regrets there. All right, so let's start with the orange and maybe start like right here. And I know they're not exactly the same colors, or I'm not doing it exactly the same amount. But I do think this will be easier for me to do than the um, circles I had on the other page. Okay, let's do the... Um, white, or the pink, or the cream, I'm sorry, again. Now, with the Arteza, I just did like a four blend. Um, with this one, I'm just doing a three color blend. And I'm going to go over that line a little bit. And then the whole thing. And it's not the greatest, but there is the uh, Castle Arts kind of blended out and without any blender. Now I'm going to take the, um, I guess it would be just fair to use the, I was going to use the Karen Dash blender, but it would only be fair to use the same blender with both of them, I do suppose. Let me sharpen this so that it's a clean um, pencil and blend this out real quick. So starting with the lightest and going Probably should have put a little bit more cream on there. Now I'm going to kind of do the same thing as I did over there. And okay. So there it is. There is the Arteza. Blend it out with the Prismacolor pencil and the Castle Arts, excuse me. Blend it out with the same pencil and very similar colors. And let's do the Polychromos. So I'm going to put up here FCP for Faber-Castell Polychromos. I'll do a quick blend here. Sorry, it's so unorganized. It gives you a good idea of how my brain works. <laughs> and see if I can't do this a little bit more evenly. Probably not. And I'm starting this with the number 131. And let's do the next one as 189, which is cinnamon. The other one was medium flesh. 
these are both very popular colors to do the um, tones with on um, uh, skin tones, my Caucasian skin tones. And then Light Flesh. And these are also supposed to be an oil-based pencil. A lot of people don't like them at all. A lot of people say they're the best ones that you can get. Or one of the best ones. I think I'm kind of rushing through this a little bit. Just because I know how long this video is getting. Let's take the Prismacolor Blender. And where did I put it? There it is. Sharpen it real quick. And the colors are not near the same because I don't really have an orangey color. But... Let's see what we got here after doing that. They do blend out really pretty though, especially with how crappy the, the coloring was. So, yeah, that looks really good for how not great that coloring was. And there's the Faber Castell um, Polychromos. And zoom out there and you can see all three together. I need to keep the other ones over here so they're not so far away. All right, now let's do the Prismacolor. The Prismacolors that I have are the Cream Pink Peach and White. So I guess start out with the uh, Peach. Is that how we did it? Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna put um, Polychromos right there and start right here. I think my biggest complaint with polychromos is that you know the the breaking in the leads I it is it is ridiculous to go to use a pencil and they um, every time you sharpen it it's breaking and I know that you know heating it up works um, to melt the core back and kind of give you you know a better core to be able to sharpen but you know, the round pencils, they, you know, roll off the desk easy, especially if you're kind of clumsy or move really fast a lot of the time like I do, um, I have children, anything like that. So, you know, to think that the pencils are never going to get dropped or, you know, have any incidences like that are really a negative. I also really do not like the wax bloom that comes on them. I've heard that you can wipe it off after you're done or at least somewhat wipe it off but I haven't done that or experienced that personally. Um, so those would probably be my biggest complaints as far as polychromos go, or I'm sorry, Prismacolor go. I think this is the best I'm gonna get of a mix between those and let's get the Prismacolor blender out. Maybe do a little bit more cream there. All right, uh, maybe a little bit more peach right there at the end. All right, let's see what we get here. Oh, that's the Lyra, I'm sorry. Let me sharpen this Prismacolor one, get a fresh end there and begin. Now, if there's a proper way to be blending these with the blender pencil, such as circles, um, up and down, anything like that, I'm just kind of going every direction, um, which is a metaphor for my entire life. <laughs> um, please let me know because um, anything that I can learn, I would love to. Okay. Uh, somehow a little hint of purple got in there. I have no idea if it was already on the page. I didn't notice it to begin with, but who knows. 
Okay, um, not a record representation, but there is the Prismacolor. I'm going to try to make this as fast as possible now, which is probably not great because it's not giving you a great example. This is the um, Faber Castell Gold Faber. And starting out with 130, I guess I'll do it right here. And then a little bit of a lighter um, with the 131. And then a peach, which is 132, I guess. Probably more like a light skin tone is what I think it is. And I don't have a cream in this color, so I'm not going to be able to do that. But I don't think it will really matter. I get the drift as to how it looks. And also, you're being able to see the gold waver and the polychromos side by side. And with the price difference, the only benefit, honestly, and difference that I think is worth it is the fact that you get so many more colors. If they were to come out with 120 gold favor, I would hands down say that that's the better option. Okay, here is the blender. Start out with the lighter. Now, mind you, I did take a little bit more time on that one than that one, but let me zoom up here, bring it up to you. Um, the, where are we at there? Okay, so the Polychromos and the Gold Faber, I don't see that much of a difference that I could justify spending a lot more money on it, but that's just me. Um, last but not least is the Crayola. So let's do this real fast. Um, that says C, so I'm going to put C-A for Castle Arts. And then I'm going to do the Crayola right here. C-R. Now, I do think that the um, Salmon would probably be the first one, I guess. Okay, so let's do Salmon color on the Crayola. There are actually some really good videos out there on YouTube about using Crayola and how to get the most out of them. I've watched them and learned a little bit. And I don't think that they're horrible pencils to have by any means. I think that they're great to be able to use with your other ones because there are times when you don't have the color pencil you need and like what they have is just exactly what, you know, you're looking for or to use it along with what you have or over it as a, as a blend really works out great um, let me go back to that real quick what am I doing and thank you for all of you who have um, managed to set through this chaos um, by no means do I think I'm a, a Claire or a Sammy <laughs> um, at all um, I very much so idolize those women and think they're amazing colorists and artists and, you know, hope to someday be able to be even a little bit like they are, um, in my skills. So I'm going to kind of leave it at that. I'm going to use the Prismacolor blender again to blend this out. And I mean... I don't really see that they're an awful pencil. Um, if you look there, um, we have, let's see here, we have Arteza, Crayola, Castle Arts, Prismacolor, Faber-Castell, Gold Faber, and Faber-Castell Polychromos. So there's that. 
and I was going to do a like brighter blend. Um, I might just um, kind of do a little swatch to show you how the colors come out. Um, this is the Arteza Expert Pencil Orchid Purple. So um, they really, let's do a lighter, I'm sorry. This is like kind of like a feather, let me sharpen it. I'm just gonna do like a feather, um, light as a feather type um, approach to putting it on there and show you how good they show up. So that is just barely touching the paper um, at all. And then a little bit harder would be like a, if like that was a one, this like be a two, and then a three. This is kind of what I'm working on as far as like learning the different approaches to how hard you need to color. So that would be like a four and then a five, and then let's say a six at the most, and that's like full pressure. So um, they lay out really pretty. Um, and then I'm gonna take a blue of the Castle Arts and do the exact same thing. And then we're gonna call it quits and see if I can't load this up and <clears throat> put it on YouTube. So I'm gonna start light as a feather kind of with this. Now this, takes a lot less, um, I don't want to say less pressure, but it comes on just prettier, I think. So we're going to call that a one and then go into a two. And as you notice, I'm having to like hold my hand kind of farther back here. And then maybe like a three. And then a four. And then a five. And then a six. So, this is the Castle Arts, this is the Arteza, and I hope you've enjoyed my chaos and can learn something from it. My personal recommendation would be for the price and the difference, I would definitely recommend the Castle Arts over the Arteza. Um, I think Arteza is a great company and I'm grateful that they were uh, so willing to fix the issue that I had and be so generous. But I definitely think that I will be using the Castle Arts more and recommending that to anybody who asks. Thank you so much. I hope you have a blessed and wonderful day. And thank you so much for tuning in.